Good day, students. For today's lesson, we will be learning about geothermal energy and hydroelectric energy sources. And to start, and to start, allow me to present you the objectives of today's lesson. At the end of the discussion, students will be able to explain how heat from inside the Earth and from flowing water are tapped as sources of energy for human use. You are also expected to state the importance of geothermal and hydroelectric energy sources, and you will be able to instill the value of stewardship to the planet Earth. As we continue living in the only habitable planet in the solar system, we need energy. We need to utilize energy. We need to generate energy as energy is essential to life and to all living organisms. The sun directly or indirectly is the source of all the energy available on Earth. Our energy choices and decisions impact Earth's natural system in ways we may not be aware of. So it is essential that we choose our energy sources carefully. Every day, we face new problems arising from the environmental state of our world. Widespread pollution is a huge problem to our environment, and there is an urgent need to start using renewable sources that eliminate the burning of fossil fuels. Geothermal energy is one of those renewable uh, sources of energy that produced clean fuel sources. Now, geothermal energy is actually or is the energy produced by various natural processes due to the heat of the earth. The word geothermal comes from the Greek words geo, which means earth, and thermi, which means heat. Geothermal energy is a renewable energy source because heat is continuously produced inside the earth. People use geothermal heat for bathing, to heat buildings, and to generate electricity. Now, geothermal energy is limited to suitable locations and it cannot be found everywhere. There are a few countries that are investing in geothermal energy. And there are three types of geothermal power plants. We have the dry steam, flash, and the binary cycle power plant. The different types of geothermal power plants have different ways of utilizing the heat of the earth in order to produce electricity. Let's start first with a dry steam power plant. For a dry steam power plant, it actually it needs three important factors in order to produce electricity. We have the steam, the turbines, or the turbine, and the generator. The hot steam from the underground is piped directly into turbines, which powers the generator. Dry steam plants use hydrothermal fluids that are primarily steam. So again, the dry steam power plant utilizes the hot steam from underground and it will be piped directly into the turbines. As the turbines moved or as the turbine moved, it would actually activate or power the generator. And this would allow the generator to produce electricity which can be utilized now by humans. The second type of geothermal power plant is a flash steam power plant. Now, where if the dry steam power plant requires three important factors in order to produce electricity, the flash steam power plant requires five factors. We have the first one is the hot water, the second factor needed for the for the electricity to be generated is a tank with a cooler temperature. Then we have the presence of the steam. 
then the turbines and the generator. Flush plants use high pressure hot water into cool low pressure water. So what happens normally is that the hot water from the underground is pumped into a a flash tank with a cooler temperature. So this is the tank with a cooler temperature. And the sudden change in temperature creates a steam. And the steam allows the turbines to move, powering the generator in order to produce electricity. So this is how the flash steam power plant utilizes the heat of the earth in order to produce electricity. Now, the third uh, geothermal power plant is the binary cycle power plant. In order to generate electricity, there are important factors that need to be present. We have the liquids, two different liquids having different boiling points. We have the steam, then the turbines, and the generator. Binary plants pass hot water, hot water through a secondary liquid with a lower boiling point, which turns to vapor to drive the turbines. So the hot water in here, the hot water from the underground, um, it actually heats the second liquid. And this, uh, this second liquid has a lower boiling point, so it will turn to vapor easily to drive the turbines and power the generator, allowing it to produce the electricity that we need. Another form of renewable energy is the hydroelectric energy. Hydroelectric energy is a form of energy generated by the motion of water and is converted into electricity. Hydroelectric energy is made from the constant motion of the water cycle and it is result of solar heat and the gravitational forces from the earth. The constant fall of water as part of the water cycle is what produces the hydroelectricity. Just like the geothermal plants, hydroelectric power plants have also three main types. We have the first one, which is the impoundment facility. The second one is the diversion facility, and the third one is the pumped storage facility. The most common hydroelectric power plant is the impoundment facility. A dam is used to control the flow of water stored in a pool or reservoir. When more energy is needed, the water is then released from the dam and once water is released, gravity takes over and the water flows downward through a turbine. And as the blades of the turbine spin, they power the generator. And so it allows the generator now to generate electricity. Another type of hydroelectric energy plant is a diversion facility. So this type of plant is unique because it does not use a dam. Instead, it uses a series of canals to channel flowing river water towards the generator powering turbines. So that is how it um, generates electricity. The third type of plant is called a pump storage facility. 
These plant collects the energy produced from solar, wind, and nuclear power and then stores it for future use. The pump storage facility and the impound facility are actually working together but they just differ in the sense that the plant stores energy or the, the, the pumped storage facility stores energy by pumping water uphill from a pool at a lower elevation to a reservoir located at a higher elevation. When there is a high demand for electricity, water located in the higher pool is released. As this water flows back down to the lower reservoir, it turns a turbine to generate more electricity. Hydroelectric energy is the most commonly used renewable source of electricity. Among the countries that utilize hydroelectric energy, China is the largest producer of it. Other top producers of hydropower around the world include the United States, Brazil, Canada, India, and Russia. Approximately 71% of all of the renewable electricity generated on Earth is from hydropower. Geothermal energy is limited to suitable locations and cannot be found everywhere. There are a few countries that are investing in geothermal energy. Nowadays, many houses and businesses are receiving hydroelectric power because of power generators being replaced or being placed inside dams. Hydropower is the most widely used renewable source around the world and it represents 17% of total electricity production. There is still economically feasible remains of hydroelectric and geothermal energy that needs to be developed. There is no doubt that an increase in usage of these renewable resources could help our environment in various ways. That would be all. That would be all and thank you for watching. Have a great day.